What's going on everyone? My name is Nicholas Merton here from Datadash and today is November 24th of 2023. Well folks, I hope you are having a fantastic day wherever you are because in today's video, I wanna spend some time to break down a critical chart that I've seen no one cover in the crypto space that I believe is going to help us determine whether or not we're really on the cusp of a new altcoin bull market, the big question that's on everyone's mind. And I want to look beyond the common metrics and indices that people are tracking, including ourselves, like Total 3. And I want to dive into something that's a custom index I've created just for you guys here on the Data Dash channel that I believe you should be keeping on your watch list and keeping on your radar. We've got a lot to unpack here in today's video. So if you happen to enjoy it, consider dropping a like. It's one of the greatest ways you can support the channel. And let's go ahead and kick off the rambling. All right, guys, I want to start here by talking a little bit about Total 3. As many of you might know, this is definitely an important index here because we are focused on the small and mid cap plays. Like if you come to me as a trader at the end of the day, if you guys like our content style and our kind of market strategy, we're focused on playing the cycles. We don't care about the immediate first double digit or triple digit move in things because that can happen on a whim in crypto. And it doesn't mean that it's a confirmation sign of a bull market. That's how much multiples you can make in crypto, right? We can make much, much more here in a full scale bull market. And we need to wait and make sure that we've got the right signs for a full scale swing up to the upside. And while total three is our market of choice, we're focusing on those small mid cap plays that make up a large chunk here of this total three market cap, which excludes Bitcoin and Ethereum. Ethereum. At the same time, we need to look beyond this here, especially when we're still seeing multi-week resistance here at the same range we got shot down in November 2022, here in February 2023, and April 2023. So what is that index? Well, the index is what I like to call the EXBS index. This is a combined market capitalization index of Ethereum, XRP, BNB, and Sol. So to be more particular, the Ethereum blockchain, uh, in this case, XRP or Ripple, and outside of that as well, taking a look at Binance Smart Chain or BNB, as well as Solana. These four plays, I think, hold significance in the crypto space, not just due to their sheer size, but that the fact is that they are in a league of their own in the crypto space, whether you like them from a fundamental basis. You guys have heard me share my optimism and criticism of many of these plays in the past. But whether or not, again, you like these projects is not the question. It's the importance of how large they are, how developed their markets are, and their market capitalization. Combined, these four cryptocurrencies are worth $347 billion. And that is a significant number, not just by its own, but when you consider the fact that it makes up over 52% of the entire altcoin space here, this definitely signals importance. We need to keep an eye on these four plays here to understand the broader trend direction of the entire cryptocurrency space. So we're going to be doing that as we go throughout today's video. And I want to go ahead and spend some time to talk a little bit about how you can build this custom index before we dive into it. In order to actually go about building the EXBS index, there are a couple different ways you can do it. I personally believe that it's important to use market capitalization when building this index. And there's a reason for that because crypto tokens are priced at varying levels. So if you build an index with ETH's price and XRP's price and BNB and SOL, essentially speaking, you're gonna get a really faulty index here because you're utilizing prices in this case. XRP, you know, there's a much larger supply of XRP and therefore the coins are at a much lower weight. So in that case, we want to actually try to get something that's gonna be as close as to giving us some kind of index that baskets these four plays by their actual share. And the best way to do that is by using market cap. So when we're typing in the symbol search here on TradingView, we first wanna start by typing, uh, in this case, Ethereum or ETH, and we're gonna use the down arrow on our keypad on our keyboard to get the market capitalization here. Once we do that, we click the plus symbol here, and from there, we're gonna add the other ones. So you can do XRP, you can go from there to do BNB, and then from there, we can also add in our last play, which is gonna be SOL or Solana. So now that we have the index built, some of you might be wondering here, why are we tracking the four largest plays here when our focus is on the small mid cap plays? And that's a very fair question. So give me some time to explain here. So the reason why is because the rule and principle of altcoin cycles is as follows. We tend to find that Bitcoin leads the way as the most defensive play. And when Bitcoin moves up, we tend to see a lot of those profits being taken and recycled into the large defensive altcoin plays or those that are less risk averse than the small mid cap plays. 
once those plays signal some signs of confidence and tend to make new relative highs or have exhausted their move, then it moves on to these small mid cap plays where some of the best returns are made later on in the cycle. It's a big reason why we've emphasized not to FOMO in so early on on just a 33% move in total market cap. That's nothing by crypto standards. And if you've been here through the last few bull markets, you guys will probably remember this principle playing out. And you'll also realize that 33% is really nothing to get choked up about. It's not life-changing returns by any means. And we can see here that this has already played out multiple times. So looking at this custom index, we can get some really important information. And what we can see very clearly is that the prior support range from back in June of 2021, and also here in January 2022, are now acting as clear resistance. This kind of ballpark range between 325 and $350 billion market capitalization for these four plays has continued to weigh down prices. So we're not just seeing resistance in total three over the past few weeks at that similar resistance range that we've seen for the past year, year and a half. But outside of that as well, we are still seeing resistance here during this window of time, albeit so far, at the current stance where we are in November, it is not closed yet, so I don't really consider it so much until we get a monthly close. We are still at the highest level here so far, we've seen in the past few months. So it's definitely gotten me on edge, it's got me interested here. But again, no serious breakout from that range. We are still facing resistance. We went up there a little bit this month towards 360 billion, and those gains were faded, rightfully so. So again, this is an important thing to keep on our radar here. Now again, this principle also repeats itself in equity markets. I'll give a great example of this. If we take a look at the SPX to RUT ratio, now this is the S&P 500 divided by the Russell 2000, it's the top 500 stocks by market capitalization divided by the top, or basically the 2000 small caps out there in the market. This gives us a really interesting gauge of the performance of the largest plays in the market, their actual percentage move or growth in market capitalization versus that of the small caps, the Russell 2000. The reason this is important is that we see during optimistic waves that we get toward exacerbated levels of essential consolidation of market cap into a few stocks, a few key companies. If you could think about it over the last decade, it's been the FANG stocks, it's been Microsoft and Apple or the FANGUM index, uh, which is essentially Facebook or now Meta, Apple, Amazon, Netflix, Google, um, you know, basically those large plays, Microsoft, that generally have swallowed up a lot of that valuation in the market. They are by and far the largest plays in the market, but eventually they get too big for their own good. They don't innovate. They don't continue growing. And just the growth narrative is gone. They're too big. They're, some things have to eventually end as all things do throughout nature. And eventually, these cycles come to an end and it takes multiple years in many cases uh, to continue contracting or at least heavy amounts of contraction of 30, 40% underperformance in these plays. And during these windows of time, it is not an optimistic period of time for the broader rest of the plays here. You're not gonna see during these downturns here, albeit while they are losing, uh, these large cap plays are giving up some of their gains. It does not mean it's a optimistic period of time where the small caps are doing good. And you can align that with history. It's not a period of time to take risk. So that's again why I think it's incredibly significant here to keep track of it. And also in our kind of a comparison to the SP 500 and the Russell 2000 ratio we built, why don't we take a look here at the percentage dominance of these four plays versus total two, right? Looking at the entire market capitalization, excluding Bitcoin, right? So we're taking the entire altcoin market cap as a base uh, to divide by our four plays. So we have four, our four plays, we're dividing it by total two, and we can see that they make up about 52% of the market. And what do you know? Again, we can see throughout the longer trend here, while there have been some pretty volatile swings, we see that these four plays here generally hold about 50% of the market and it's been ascending over time. The question we need to ask ourselves is whether or not these plays are still signaling optimism. And again, we can take a look through history here, right? We go back through June of 2022, right? Ever since that window of time, 
we have had these altcoin plays moving up here in the market. They've been guarding more and more market dominance. When we see downward periods of time right here in February 2021, these were top signals. December of 2021 as well, a great top signal. Here in May of 2022, right? These were the big capitulation points here for the overall way to market cap in the crypto space. And I can tell you guys, if you look back again, you will see that it wasn't like Ethereum was dropping 10, 15, 20% and some altcoins were trading higher. No, they were bleeding heavily. So they only win, the smaller plays in this market only really win have that opportunity to make really sizable returns when we have waves of optimism like between here and the period of time between October 2020 going into that period of time. So we want to see momentum in these plays. And if we don't, then we may be spelled in for some really bad trouble here, not just for the four largest plays, but also for the broader altcoin space. Now, I want to signify something really interesting here. While again, we have seen maybe a potential flip here on the Lux algo indicator again, this isn't into a monthly close yet, so we've got to give it a couple of days before this really actually potentially flips. But notice here on the Lux Algo indicator, one of our indicator suites that we use here on the channel and I use for my personal trading strategies, you can see here that we've continued to face resistance in this range. We're looking at the monthly time frame. You know, a lot of people might talk about the Lux Algo indicator or utilize it. We utilize it in a very unique way here in the monthly time frame and on the weekly time frames to see whether or not long term trends are being broken. And this has been a clear level of resistance. It's no coincidence that we're seeing it at this range here and why price has been reacting. And now at this month, while it is looking optimistic now, bear in mind that back in July and April, we had the same looking monthly candle here, practically speaking, and it faded by the end of the month. So a lot can happen here in a matter of around six days in the market. So keep an eye here on what's gonna happen if we really maintain this green flip here. And more importantly, if we're able to break through and clear through this resistance mark here for price, if we can do that, that might be indicative of a trend shift here. It might be indicative of the start of a upward swing in these plays that can't be ignored irrespective of if it's going to be a full on bull market, it at least might mean that we can move up towards some higher levels here towards some of the monthly opens like back here at 446 billion or here around 545 billion. We might have a short term wave of optimism or a full swing bull market that not only will mean solid percentage gains here for even the defensive plays, but also much more higher returns for those smaller mid cap plays. So again, as someone here who has been relatively cautious, I'm keeping my eye here, I'm watching these levels, and we're gonna see how it plays out here. Now, if you guys want to track this indicator here, not only our custom index, which we showed you guys how to build, but also if you guys wanna utilize Lux Algo for your trading strategies, you guys can get it down below at the link down below in the description. You can not only get access to the indicator we talked about, but a whole suite that is offered within the Lux Algo subscription. And the good news is it's 60% off here for Black Friday but it's only gonna be around here for 17 hours. This is the last video where we're really gonna be able to talk about this Black Friday sale here. So if you guys wanna get access to it and utilize it across practically any market out there, we recommend using it around crypto and some areas of the stock market, as well as maybe commodities as well. Uh, this is definitely an indicator suite that I think could be really powerful for you guys if used on those longer term time frames in order to find potential ranges of support, resistance, and also trend flips as well. It can be a good sign for that. So if you guys are interested, check out the link down below in the description. They've been a good partner of ours in the channel for a long time and one of the few trend indicators that I like to utilize in my suite. I've gone through thousands over the past 12 years of trading. There are very few that I would say actually hold the weight. And there's a reason why Lux Algo has such a place here in this market. They're constantly innovating, constantly improving. And that's very relevant here when you're using indicator suites. Now, I want to go ahead and talk a little bit here as well about another chart that we can track uh, just kind of to kind of also take total three into a more unique approach. And that is taking total three and subtracting XRP, BNB and Seoul. You know, I've had so many people again, who say that like, this is just a guaranteed different window of time here for altcoins. The game has changed here. And they cite a few coins that are up double digits or triple digits. But the problem here is that at the end of the day, unless you're really looking at the indices, you won't get a clear picture. And what we've seen here is again, that we're just barely where we were back in February of 2023, a far cry away, over $50 billion lower than where we were back in August when we sold altcoin positions there, altcoin plays like Uni and so many others. And it was a good period of time to sell those altcoins because we have still yet to reclaim that even with this optimistic wave we've had here. And we've not been able to get past that red band here in Luxembourg. However, if we wait, 
and we get a clear green close above, say, $350 billion, where we get above that resistance band, that could be your cue. That could be your cue for all these plays here to be able to expand potentially to 450, 550 billion, 650, like some of those bigger ballpark metrics that, again, when you're including those hundreds of billions of dollars of additional market cap that you could expect over the next course of the next few months, I mean, we're talking about small mid cap plays. You've got the opportunity to get it completely right, and you could just simply toss darts at the market and just pick random altcoins. 50% gains there. 100% gains, 200% gains. You don't have to be a genius. It's dumb money. It's easy to make money when the trend is strong and you've got the conviction to go in with sizable capital. It's not smart to do that when you're approaching historic resistance for the past year and a half, right? It's not good to do that going in here towards ranges where usually you get shot down without the confirmation that, hey, those levels are no longer resistance and the sky's the limit, right? So that's the point here that I really want to bring about today, guys. We've brought up some really interesting charts and ways to look at the market. A big one here being the EXBS index that you guys can add as well. But I, again, just really want to emphasize this here as we go into the next few months. You know, what, what, one thing we've really hinted on here is for these increases in market capitalization, the reason why I've always remained a bit skeptical that we are at a position at current valuations to continue accelerating higher why I remain a bit more bearish than bullish. If you come here for my candid opinion, guys, I'm going to give it to you. It's rooted in some pretty fundamental analysis, not just the fundamentals, like is there a value created? No, but really like on what actually determines market price, which is inflows or outflows. At the end of the day, we did in our video a while back talking about the Bitcoin ETF and what it could bring here in the first year, as well as the Bitcoin halving event. And the big emphasis we mentioned here is even in an optimistic scenario, most people like Galaxy Digital, which are, I would say, already pretty optimistic, they wrote a pretty great research report that called for 14 billion in inflows. We did in our video, we almost, in this case, doubled that. We kicked it up to 25 billion, and we also included the halving, which is gonna add about $5.5 billion uh, in missed sell side pressure potential for miners giving us a $30 billion positive market order flow change. Well, it's important to note here that with that, we need to ask whether or not that's gonna be enough to kick off a new bull market. And as we discussed in that video, if we take a look back at the last cycle, we have to remember that Bitcoin from March of 2020 went from $3,900 to a high of around 65 or 69,000 in the last cycle, which albeit it was a great increase, it also was matched with an even greater increase in percentage terms in stablecoin liquidity. As market valuations grow for financial assets, irrespective of if it's Bitcoin, a stock, whatever, the demand for dollar liquidity grows bigger and bigger and bigger. Simply put, we're going to need a lot of money this time around to make similar percentage returns or even a fraction of what we saw in the last cycle. And if we had a $128 billion increase in the last bull market in liquidity, and we're expecting a $30 billion positive market order flow change here, more specifically $25 billion in dollar liquidity, right? that's the optimistic one. We've, we've gone beyond the optimistic expectations of Grayscale. Is an ETF really as big of a deal as people think it is? Especially now that Bitcoin is at a $735 billion market cap versus a $79 billion market cap. Or if you want to be a bit more fair, which we'll do here, which is starting off from $300 billion at the absolute potential lows of the cycle, as people are calling it. I don't know where that big you know, kind of spigot of money is just going to come pouring out. The Fed does not have the ability to print money on mass and lower interest rates sharply. And if they've done that, something really bad has probably broken in the economy. If they're willing to do that in an environment where there's still inflation going on, where inflation is well above the 2% target and has not cratered below 2%, which it needs to do, historically speaking, in order to really steer clear of future inflation, We may not have the steam here to really kick off a new altcoin cycle just yet. You guys do come here for my opinion, and I want to reciprocate that point. I want to, sorry, not reciprocate, but more importantly, reiterate that point 
that we may very well not be at the start of a new altcoin cycle. Let's see how November closes out, right? If we still can't clear through this range here, this psychological barrier, right? We are far cry away from this prior highs. What does that tell you here? It tells us that there's not some new sum of liquidity coming into the space, especially not into altcoins. And that could be a really big barrier for these plays to continue moving higher, especially as stable coins on mass have continued to be shut down by regulators are continuing. If you're looking at the more regulated ones like USDC and Paxos and not just Tether, you find that there's continuous churn on a lot of these stable coins moving out of the market. BlackRock, Larry Fink from BlackRock is even calling for the closure of Tether. That would spell bad news for Bitcoin's price, irrespective of what you think about Tether. It's been the lifeline of crypto over the last few years. And the question is, is whether or not an ETF is going to be enough to really kick up Bitcoin's market cap from this point. I just say be careful, guys. That's all I'm going to say. As we go into the close of the week here, guys, I hope, if anything, this video proved valuable for you. I hope it gives you some food for thought here on what you can do to prepare for a potential new cycle, uh, to prepare for that next major upswing, to have your priorities focused on altcoins, not getting so caught off guard, feeling like, oh no, I missed FTT token pumping. Like as if everyone was, was all in on FTT and you just missed it. Uh, this is again, the, the unfortunate FOMO that a lot of speculators and a lot of really, I would say kind of market manipulators get you to feel at the moment because they want you to be the exit liquidity. They want you to buy into those positions at you know new fresh relative highs that are going to allow them to exit out of their failing positions over a longer term period of time. We got to be smart. We got to be protective of our capital first and foremost, and only when the right signs present themselves, start to build positions in the market. Thanks so much, guys, for tuning in. If you like this video, consider dropping a like. And along with that as well, if you are looking to build your own altcoin portfolio out there, I highly recommend that if you guys are looking to buy Bitcoin, altcoin, and precious metals, that you consider setting up an IRA, an individual retirement account through our sponsor, iTrust Capital. They've been one of our long-term partners here on the channel as well. And one of the big things about an IRA is that this is going to allow you to take upon a large amount of tax advantages when investing and in trading. If you're swinging from one altcoin to another, you can incur a lot of short-term capital gains tax making profits. However, if you have an IRA account, not only does iTrust Capital, like most exchanges, have a wide range of altcoins out there that you can trade, but if you're trading from one altcoin to another, you're going to owe no tax on those trades. Outside of the fees you have to pay for trading, which is only 1%, a very favorable fee for an IRA account. From there, you're able to go through and trade a whole range of cryptocurrencies, stacking up your account balance if you continue to get things right. And the best part is you only owe taxes when you actually close the account into retirement, when your income bracket is much lower and therefore your IRA earnings are taxed at a much lower rate. So this is a really great way to take upon the tax advantages afforded to you in the United States in a completely legal way and a great way to build up that generational wealth portfolio for retirement in crypto. At a minimum, you might be going all in on crypto and not need to have everything ready for retirement, but at a minimum, having an IRA and putting some contribution into it is generally a solid principle when it comes to kind of finance 101 and good financial practices. So if you guys are interested, check out the link down below in the description. You guys will get $100 dollars when registering with my link down below in the description. But that's it for today's video, guys. Thank you all so much for watching. Until the next one, I'll see you guys in the next video. Trade smart, stay safe, and I'll see you guys in the next video on Monday at 6 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Take care, everyone.